Hello, everybody. Uh, this screencast is going to be a quick primer on the Gulf of Tonkin incident, as well as a primer on what the Constitution says about waging and declaring war. Uh, I wanted to give you this little refresher before you do your project, a um, little bit of helpful information. Uh, to revisit the Gulf of Tonkin incident, just to kind of go over what we had gone over previously. Basically, it went down like this. There were American naval vessels operating in the Gulf of Tonkin, uh, and that was off the coast of North Vietnam, and they were being, there was a, they reported being attacked by North Vietnamese patrol boats. However, the North Vietnamese had denied attacking any ships. Uh, in other words, you know, they, 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 one side said, you know, the Americans said, we, you know, we were attacked. The North Vietnamese said, no, we didn't. Um, and as a result of that, um, President Johnson went to Congress and said, look, uh, our ships were attacked. Um, I need you to pass a resolution uh, in response to the Gulf of Tonkin incident. It was called the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution. And what it was supposed to do, uh, it would empower the president to send troops to Vietnam, essentially a use of force, uh, permission to use force. Uh, a resolution, for those of you that don't remember what it is, a resolution is basically a formal expression by a meeting, agreed to by a vote. So, you know, Congress is formally saying, okay, we'll give the president, you know, we'll authorize him to use combat troops to use force uh, to repel an attack and so on and so forth. Um, sorry, there was a bit of a technical problem. Uh, to recap, what does the Constitution say about waging and declaring war? Well, uh, to break it down like this, Congress has the power to declare war, yet the President is Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces. So you can see that neither branch of government has full authority. And you know that I'm asking you uh, in this uh, assignment that you're going to be doing to, to consider the congressional role in uh, approving uh, war, you know, war-making powers, war actions, that sort of thing. So, just to recap, what is an example of a declared war? I want you to keep this in mind as you're doing this assignment, because I think you're going to find there's differences between Vietnam and, say, the First and Second World War, which were actually declared wars. Uh, keep that in mind. Uh, this is a copy of the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution itself. Uh, basically, it's saying that it supports the determination of the president as commander-in-chief to take any and all necessary measures to repel an armed attack against the forces of the U.S. Basically, they're saying, hey, President Johnson, we're giving you permission to repel uh, further aggression. Uh, Section 2 is basically saying, you know, that... Uh, South Vietnam needs to be protected. We need to uh, help it as it fights for its freedom, defends its freedom. Um, and the uh, by the way, the resolution expires when the president determines that the peace and security of the area is reasonably assured. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole resolution. Uh, you have a copy of that. You can go back, but I just wanted to recap for you on that. So, interesting thing to point out here. Well, does the resolution actually declare war against North Vietnam? No. So, consider that when you're um, analyzing Congress's role in waging and declaring war. The resolution does, however, uh, say that the president, as commander-in-chief, can take all necessary measures to repel an armed attack against the United States and prevent further aggression. So that's something else to consider as you're going to be doing the project. And remember, you're also going to be using Gulf of Tonkin as a case study and compare and contrast that with another conflict that we've been in, the Gulf War, Iraq War, uh, Afghanistan, and so on and so forth. 
Uh, that's it. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks.